another long distance away game and what a big one away at Arsenal and despite what some people might think I pay for my own trips my own tickets to these away games but I have got as a supporter of mine one of my sponsors um, Toyota RRG particularly um, supporting me and from time to time not every time but I'm lent a lovely car like this one right behind me it's the wrong colour obviously and I did check um, and I suppose they, they pointed out to me red and black sometimes is City's away kit that's what I think of as City's away kit so nice car to drive down there to, uh, to Arsenal in and I've got to say these days with all the rail strikes and the cost of railways a tank of petrol is actually probably cheaper than paying for a train anyway even though it can be more comfortable but in this car I'm sure it'll be fine so off we go another big away game what a big game this is as well I wonder who I'm going to meet along the way and by the way just while I'm driving down there, metaphorically speaking, I was speaking to a Norwegian journalist at the press conference on Friday. And of course, there are two big Norwegian players playing in this particular game. This is quite an, an interesting insight. I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll meet whoever's down at the Emirates Stadium. Yeah, my name is Mikal Asrud, working for the Norwegian newspaper BG, the biggest newspaper uh, in Norway. So, um, uh, yeah, that's me here. I'm here all the way till New Year's Eve just to follow Manchester's two Norwegians. And this is the perfect game for you, isn't it? Because you've got Odegaard, who's arguably the best player in midfield from Norway. You've got Haaland, who's arguably the best striker from Norway, so you must really look forward to a game like this. Yeah, it's a massive game back in Norway. Um, Odegaard is not only captain of Arsenal, that's probably the most important thing here in, in the UK, but he's the captain of the national team uh, as well. So um, he's, he's, a, he's become a much bigger star just the, the last past year. Uh, and Haaland obviously has been quite a phenomenon in Norway for many years, even though he it escalated when he came to Man City. So it's, um, I think I, I'm I'm very excited about the TV numbers back in Norway for that game because it's going to be huge interest uh, before the game, during the game, and after the game. It's uh, it's uh, for the football supporters it's almost like the the national day, the Constitution Day. Is there any way of knowing whether there are more people than in Norway wanting City to win or wanting Arsenal to win? Uh, I'm, I don't have the exact numbers. Of course, uh, historically, uh, Liverpool, uh, Man United has been big in Norway um, for obvious reasons. Um, but, uh, but I guess the fan base in Norway is probably a little more, more to the Holland side uh, because he's a goal-scoring phenomenon that, that, that has a pretty great appeal to maybe the young fans who, who follows uh, football and, and the Premier League. So uh, Arsenal is getting much bigger, uh, but uh, City with the season Holland had the last season, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I guess it has exploded. Uh, I don't know about the fan base, but the, just the general interest of Man City. Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> Pretty difficult. If uh, if uh, City uh, is okay, is a zero zero the first 15, 20 minutes, the, the first real high pressure to take that off. Uh, I think maybe it's going to be uh, be a, a game of who which striker is most clinical, and I think maybe Holland is pretty hungry to score some goals after being uh, left out with no goals against Wolves and, and Leipzig. So. Maybe 1 0 to, to Man City, I think. So here we are now on match day on the Holloway Road, right near the ground. Let's see who I meet down here. So you're a City fan, but you're here with your Arsenal supporting cousin. Um, so what do you two think? And will you be at loggerheads today? Well, we've had a good last few seasons, been, it's been a good ground for us the last few seasons. The last couple of games, we watched we missed Rodri, so I think today it could be a different game today. So I just hoping uh, we get something out of it today. I know you won the Community Shield, but it was 2015 last time Arsenal beat City. How do you feel about today? Well, we've got a good chance with De Bruyne and Rodri being out. 
Um, better time than any, I think, to play City because they're only going to get stronger as the season goes on. So yeah, today's probably the best chance to get anything off them, I think. Um, I think a lot of it depends on how Arsenal play rather than City. Um, and we're not too good defensively at home either, so that's going to be a bit of a problem as well. So it could go either way, really. But I don't think it'll be a draw. It'll either be a win for City or a win for Arsenal. Pep Guardiola's talked down the significance of this game, saying that the one at the Etihad later in the season will be more significant. Do you think it's significant today? Um, yeah, because I don't really want to see Man City getting even two points ahead of Arsenal. We want to be ahead of City, so we've got that advantage at the end of the season. Um, Psychological, I suppose, as well, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't ever want to be that far behind City. Even four points is going to be a lot. Um, especially with Champions League this year, for us. Yeah, I think we need to win today. And last year, when I came to this very fixture, I know it's delayed, it was moved back a little bit, but I said to my family, if City win today here, they go on and win the league because they'll have broken Arsenal. Yeah. It's a bit early in the season to say the same, but still, City win today? I'd like to think so. Ireland's been quiet for the last two or three games, so hopefully we can get Ireland firing today. It's we might not need Rodri. But, uh, it's going to be a tough one today, I think. You know, if we come away with a, a draw, it, it, you know, we've done well. But hopefully we can come away with three points. I'm not going to ask you for scores, but are you confident? I'm like that, to be honest. I'm always, I've never been confident. All my life as a City fan, I've never been confident. Are so, you yeah. confident? Yeah, I'm 50-50 as well. Um, I mean, even if we were to go one or two nil up, I still wouldn't be 100% confident. If you look at the Tottenham game, if you look at the Fulham game, the way we give the goals away, we can't do that today. So I'm sitting on the fence as well. I'm not, I'm not 100% confident. Still be friendly cousins after oh, the yeah, game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're a neutral. Yes, I am. So who do I you am. actually support? By I'm the way, Bont Wanderers fan. Bont Wanderers, yeah. Right. Family, granddad, dad has to has to stay the same, doesn't it? So yeah, not far from City. But we're in London today, massive game, deciding the Premier League. Is it deciding the Premier League though, with Tottenham looking strong this year? You tell me, I mean, this is, this is huge, isn't it? It is huge. This result today, I mean, you see how close it is in the Premier League title race now. I know we're only eight weeks in. Like, it's hard to judge. You shouldn't really look at the Premier League table at all. But I'm going to say, Arsenal are going to turn up today. I've got a feeling the Gunners are going to do it. Rodri is a massive miss and people don't understand how big that is. I know people are questioning Martinelli and Saka. I think people are in for a surprise when they see the lineups. I think Saka will start and maybe Martinelli on the bench. I think Arteta is going to have to perform, get something back after that Lons result. I'm going 2-1 Arsenal. And I'm sorry to you, Ian, because I know you're going to be gutted with me. I just have a feeling. We've, we've seen what happened already in the Community Shield. Arsenal will prove themselves. They've got their extra signings and now in big games they can turn up. So that's my prediction. And you'll enjoy the game. Yeah, it's an incredible course, atmosphere. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be insane, yeah. Well, I'm Tees, uh, representing for Three Pointers TV. Uh, we've been doing it probably since COVID, since uh, the lockdown and everything. We've got about 790 subscribers, so please look out for us. Yeah. We're rival then to Arsenal Fan TV, are you? Well, you know, yeah, we, I guess we're competing out here, so AFTV, watch out, you know, watch out, you know. We're coming for you, bro. <laughs> and what, what do you think today then? How big is the game? Is it, is it Listen, just three points? Or? It's, it's a massive game, man. I mean, uh, obviously, I'm a bit disappointed with the way Arteta played Bukayo um, during the week in the Champions League so I don't know whether he starts or not listen if we can get a win um, under David Rea because that might be the difference because we got the result against um, Everton under, with David Rea in goal so maybe if, if, if we get this result and with David Rea in goal unfortunately we might have to say it might be goodbye for, uh, for Ramsdale that's, that's just my opinion so you know. Arsenal win today, does that make them proper challengers? Arsenal lose today, is that they're not proper challengers? That's a really good question, um, Ian. Um, I reckon Arsenal win today, listen, it's onwards and upwards, but dare I say it, there's our neighbours, you know, Tottenham, they're looking, they're looking like a great outfit uh, for this season. So, But yeah, beat Man City today and, and who knows, you know, it could be the same like last season, but we go one step further. Uh, lose, this time around. Lose. Lose and then yeah, I guess we'll be questioning depending, we'll be pointing fingers maybe at Arteta and things like that. I mean if we lose, listen, it's still early doors, it's still early in the season. It's only do you know what I mean, it's only what six games in. I don't you know, so 
So yeah, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Really tough game. Uh, no Rodri, no De Bruyne. It's going to be like uh, it's going to be really tough. So uh, and people putting me off, but um, it's one of those. Uh, we're just going to like dig in and take a point. To be honest, and if we can get a three, brilliant. So it's one of those uh, like you know. We're going to play a game to try and keep uh, keep the ball, work hard, and um, see how we go. Uh, today is a very big day. Um, it's the first time I've seen City play since Franny Lee passed. Uh, Franny Lee was really one of my heroes. My, my main time going to see City was in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Loved him to bits. Uh, so sad for his passing. Um, I've seen him in the later years, he wasn't looking very well at all, so maybe it's a godsend for him. Today though, turning to the match, we're going to miss Rodri. It's a very a very good team he's put out, but I think we can do it, I think we can edge it, maybe 2-1. And you're here with the family? I'm here with my sister for the first time. Are you optimistic? Yeah, of course, always optimistic. You're more optimistic than him then? I like to think so, yeah. Always look on the optimistic side. Well, let's hope you're all right then. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the game. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. I'm quite pleased. I thought we controlled the game for 25 minutes. Our case chance looked like a big one. Um, and uh, then I think we'll, we let them back into it a little bit. A couple of ticks came up, swung the game back in their favour. I thought we regained control near the end, so hopefully Nick won, win it 1-0. Still confident then? Uh, I think we're more a chance of winning than losing, but uh, a draw wouldn't surprise me. Very disappointing really. Um, I think either team played particularly well, but we just couldn't get that, that chance but Aki should have scored and it, it could have been a very different game but um, yeah I don't think either team created much but they got a lucky deflected goal at the end and that's it but we move on I don't think it changes anything I think we're still the team to beat and fingers crossed we can do it again four in a row all right all right I thought they were they got they got the goal fair enough uh, we, we weren't at the race today we were though but it's 50-50 uh, it? you know what I mean fair enough to them they got the they got the chance to win. Yeah. It's a long way to go though, isn't it? A long way to go. I said this, uh, remind me uh, next year in about uh, February time where this is going. You know, you know, fair enough for them, they've won today, three points for them, they took the chance, absolutely fine. But remind me next year. Well good enough. We did say though, me and him, it's one nil. We've got to step up. It's the first time we've lost back to back games in 2018. It's the build save. We'll still win it. You know we will leave. We'll still win it. Disappointed. I thought we, we should have won that game. So, there's a little bit of the edge there. We just didn't have that. We missed De Bruyne, missed Rodri massively. And I just think we've not really made up for that. Rodri is a huge miss for us, he really is. And I just think that we haven't really capitalised on that. So, after the international break, back on track. Hopefully, yeah. Rodri will be rested, he'll be back. I hope we'll have him fresh. Brighton at home is a massive game for us. Then we've got United after that. We've got young boys in the week. We've got three games now to capitalise on three away defeats on the bounce. So, hopefully, we'll beat. We've got Brighton next. United, young boys, and then United. So we get back on track. I thought it was a very evenly fought contest. 
think we're a damn good luck at the end of the collection like that. I've been here before. I've been here for 10 years. 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 We should have come over with a point. The point was good enough. You've got to go and face him now, haven't you? Yeah. Well, we'll get it over with a pint. We'll have a pint together to sort it out. Gas, Eggside and Cooks and Brunch played really well today and we're proud of the lads. We got stuck in. Uh, they weren't much between the two teams. They didn't create much. We didn't create much. They're not going to win the league. That's, that's their best team. Thought City played well, compact, passed the ball well. Uh, I'm proud of the lads today. All right, deflection goal. That's what it is. Uh, that's it really. Uh, my daughter, she's watching up in Newcastle. Our Mads, Newcastle unit, watching the game today. Ian, you know what you say? It's great to be a blue. Disappointed really. Never really got going. So. Um, Ireland wasn't in it, never really got in the game at all. I'd have kept him on, uh, kept Alvarez on, took Ireland off. Uh, we just never really got going and then they scored a lucky goal, didn't they? Deflection. I've got and one thing it. to say. Have you ever won the treble? <laughs> have you ever won the Prem? You're not in ages anyway. Have you ever won three in a row? Have you ever been Champions of Europe? Never happened. It's a 1 0. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> See ya. Do you know what? He just said everything. I think this was crap today. I want to look at a few issues today. But okay, okay. We're the champions. Right? We're the champions. And then we'll look at a few things. Early on in that game, City had a couple of really good chances that uh, I think Ake was one that put it over the bar. Uh, and then in the second half, I've got to say, uh, it was very equal, more or less, but I thought Arsenal were slightly the pushier, the more determined near the end. They got a bit of luck. The game could have gone either way, I suppose, but that's football. And uh, today, it wasn't City's day, um, but obviously a long way to go yet. Thanks to everybody who contributed to this. Uh, thanks very much to you for watching. Thanks to MotoringOffenseLawyers.com, to Timson and to RRG Group, Toyota Rochdale, for the, the great car, Toyota Corolla, that's made my journey down here uh, very smooth, I must say. Maybe not as bad going on. You can understand why the Arsenal fans are celebrating, can't you? Um, my guest on the audio podcast this week is Ian Boyer, former City player who won the European Cup when he's cup with City and twice won the European Cup with Nottingham Forest, so that should be interesting. I'll see you again next time in two weeks from Brighton. There'll be a couple of videos on the channel in between times, but uh, have a great fortnight. And despite this defeat, don't know to my opinion, one jot. It's great to be a blue.